Recently, when the legendary playback singer S.P. Balasubramaniam died, did you feel sad? Did you grieve for that loss? If you did, I am sure many people around you would not have understood your grief. There would not have been any empathy for you for feeling that grief. But that grief was real. And psychology has got a term for it. It is called disenfranchised grief. Which it's, That's a mouthful of a term. It means that it's the grief that you feel that you're not supposed to feel. Other examples of disenfranchised grief would be uh, when we grieve for the loss of a pet, when we grieve for the loss of someone else's pet. We can also feel very sad and uh, depressed when we hear about children dying in a different country due to a terrorist attack or a bus accident or something of that sort. How many of us felt sad when we heard of people dying on the roads? because of hunger. These are all examples of disenfranchised grief which we are not supposed to feel but we still feel. If you remember, thousands of people cried when Princess Diana died. Thousands of people across different countries. Millions of people mourned for the loss of Michael Jackson when he passed away and they were mourning for days together. These are all examples of disenfranchised grief, grief which we actually feel. So when a celebrity dies, how do we how do we cope with that grief people often follow the last days of the celebrity you know they want to know what ha- what happened just before he or she died they follow the news on the internet on the tv or uh, on their mobile phone wh- wherever to see uh, until until the last rites of that person is performed until that person is cremated or buried or whatever else that is done they just follow every detail of what happened to that person And they also follow every bit of news about that person. They begin to dig into the news and learn about that person. I'm sure many of you did not know S.P. Balasubramaniam other than his singing. Often that's what happens. We connect to the professional emotionally because of their work. But once they pass away, we kind of begin to learn them about him as a person. We know about their family. We know about their upbringing, where they were born, how they struggled through their lives, what were their dreams. What were their setbacks? How did they overcome their setbacks? Who are the children who have been left behind? What's the other legacies that they have left behind? We come to know all of this. It's very ironical that when they are alive, we know them only from their work. But when they pass away, we know more intimate details about them. But that's a way to cope with the loss of a celebrity with whom you're emotionally connected. If he's an actor, we kind of begin to see his movies on a continuous basis. If he's a singer, we listen to some of their favorite songs on a loop. You know, it goes about for 24 hours together. We just listen to the same songs of that person. If he's a sports person, we go back to see their matches or the goals that they scored, the highlights of their life. If it is an author, we go back to read about their favorite works. This is a way of coping with disenfranchised grief. When you feel this grief, that's when you understand that emotional connect is not just to people whom you know. It can go beyond that. We can even feel for uh, uh, loss of life, like animals being slaughtered in a different country because of fire, because of some other issues. We can even feel terribly sad even when trees are cut, right? That's again a sense of our connection runs deeper, right? If you If you have experienced disenfranchised grief, You should acknowledge that your connections do run deep. You should not feel ashamed or guilty because you experience this kind of grief. You should feel that this is just an expression of your humanity.